Welcome. Praise the Lord. We're glad that you're with us today on this very special Good Friday edition of Worship and Word Online with the Abundant Life Fellowship Church family. We are thankful you're with us. Uh, today we are going to focus on our precious Savior who is our Passover lamb. We're going we're gonna to take a look at that cross and we're going to look at it through uh, that lens, if you will, uh, that Old Testament lens of the Passover lamb. So participate, get, get involved in this. Uh, we're going to worship here in just a few minutes with the uh, Abundant Life Fellowship worship team. And then following that, I'm going to bring a word uh, from the Lord from Exodus chapter 12. And then at the con conclusion, we're going to receive communion. So if you haven't got those elements and you want to pause this or stop it and go get those elements if you haven't already done so, go ahead and do that. Or you can just do it in the spirit. Uh, but anyway, we're going, to do, we're going to do communion at the very end. So once again, we're so glad that you're with us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, uh, all that you are and all that you've done for us. We just give you thanks, Father. You're so good to us, and we're so grateful that you have saved us and rescued us. And we're so grateful that you uh, have loved us so much that you were willing to pay uh, the price that you've paid for us. And so we're humbled by that today, and, and we're just awed by, by that great sacrifice, Father, you were willing to make for us. Help us all, Father, to appreciate it in a deeper way today. Help us all to, to understand Father, just exactly what it should mean for our lives. And Father, as we worship, as we come together around your word, we pray for your presence, Father. I pray for your presence to be manifested here. I pray for your presence to be manifested everywhere that that's, uh, people are watching this, Father. Just be so real to them. Be so close, Father. And uh, uh, Lord, we're just so grateful for that. Let strength and joy and power and encouragement come from that. We give you all the praise and glory and the honor now for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We praise your name. He never saw. 
Praise the Lord. Let's, let's look to the Word now. And we're going to look at Exodus chapter 12. And what we're going to focus on is the Passover. For some reason, the Passover has taken a, a major significance in this, this time that we found ourselves in, this, this crisis that uh, we're currently in. Uh, because the children of Israel were dealing with a plague and, and they were told to go into their home. God told them, go into your homes and stay in your home. And so, 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 uh, so very, uh, a lot of the imagery of this has really uh, struck a, a, a people's hearts very closely. And so we can, we can appreciate some things uh, in the Passover now that we can apply to our lives today because it just kind of makes it so real to us. And uh, we're, there, there's a lot we can learn from this. So we want to focus today on our precious Savior and what He's done for us to save us, to rescue us. And so we'll look to Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you anoint now, anoint my speaking, anoint our hearing, Lord, so that your purposes can be accomplished, Father, as you speak, as your voice goes forth, God. And Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk today about Jesus, our Passover. Now, in, our, in, our, in, our, in, in what we've read, the story of the Passover, we understand that God had been bringing judgments upon Egypt. Egypt was a, was a Jehovah-rejecting nation. It was a nation that had chosen to be uh, idolaters, and they worshiped all sorts of gods, and God brought very specific judgments against those gods. And here in our story, we see this very last plague, this tenth plague. As Pharaoh had continued to refuse to release the Hebrew children to, to go and worship. And, and so this judgment was coming. And so God gave instruction to his people. He, here, here's what he told them. He said, I want you to, to pick a lamb, choose a lamb, and then bring it into your home and keep it for about four days because we want to make sure this lamb is a lamb without blemish. We want this lamb to be as perfect as a lamb uh, could, can possibly be. And then I want you on a particular night, on this Passover night, I want you to sacrifice this lamb. I want you to, I want you to kill it. And then I want you to take of its blood and I want you to mark your home with that blood. Mark the, the doorpost and the lintel of your uh, uh, doorway to mark your home as a sign, a sign that you believe me, that you believe what I have said, that you believe that I am God and there is no other. And, and, and then, of course, uh, you are to remain in your home. Do not leave your home. See, they gave, God gave them a stay-at-home order. And so they have to stay at home and they mark their home. The, all these folks who were in their homes there in Goshen, uh, they marked it with blood. And then, of course, we know that night the angel of death came uh, and, and, and across all of the land, everywhere where, there, where that blood was not there to indicate that they were believers and that they were obedient to God, God brought that judgment of the death of the firstborn. And it was a tragic night. It was a terrible night of great sorrow and sadness. You can imagine what the atmosphere must have been like throughout Egypt. But in the homes of the Hebrews, there was peace and there was security and safety under the blood or behind that blood. They, there, was, there was safety. And so there was a clear distinction that night between those that believed God and those that rejected God. Those that believed God had marked their homes with the blood of the Lamb. And those that, that rejected God and refused to obey Him, whoever they were, Egyptian or Hebrew, that, that death angel visited their home and brought judgment to them. And so there's so much that we can, that we can learn from, from this uh, as, as, we, as we look at this story of the Passover. The death angel passed over those marked by the blood. That death angel passed over. God in judgment passed over those who obeyed him, who listened, who heard what he said and, and took it to heart and obeyed him. And that, that death angel passed over them. That judgment did not come to their home. And so we want to we want to learn from that today. And what we know is that Jesus is our Passover. Uh, Paul tells us that in the New Testament. He specifically says Jesus is our Passover Lamb. But Jesus is the Lamb of God. And 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 I want to say to you that that we live in a a world a, a world that has rejected God, a world that is uh, sin sick, a world that's in rebellion to Him. And we know that judgment's coming one day. We, we believe that God's holy and he's just and he'll do what he says he'll do. And we know there's a line drawn. And we know that eventually this world, mankind in this world will cross that line. And then judgment's going to come. 
and the judgment's going to be a, a, a terrible thing, certainly, but it's not something that God has not in His love and grace and mercy hasn't given us every opportunity to escape. And, and, and so judgment is coming. There is going to definitely be a judgment. And, and so uh, one of these days, Jesus is going to come and He's going to come for those who are marked by the blood, who are under the blood and, um, uh, and, 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 and that safety uh, and he's going, to, he's going to rescue them. But for the rest of the world, we understand judgment is going to come and it's judgment that is deserved and a judgment that uh, is currently, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's there, this world is condemned already. Uh, uh, and so uh, we need to understand that and we need to understand that Jesus is our Passover. And we need, to, we need to hear that. We need to hear today that Jesus is the Savior. He saves us from sin. He saves us from the judgment that sin brings. And so he is our Passover lamb. But just because we know he's the Passover lamb isn't enough. We have to apply the blood. So how do we apply that blood on this day that we consider uh, uh, as we think about and as we focus on the crucified Savior, this Good Friday? How do we apply that blood, that sacrifice? How do we put that to work in our life? We have to apply it. And I would say to you that we do it, first of all, we do it by repentance. Repentance is when we hear what God says, we agree what he says, and then we do something about what he says. That's what repentance is. Repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of life. And so I think that that hyssop that they used uh, to apply that blood to the, to the doorpost and lintel, uh, I believe that that hyssop it would, would be a picture, a picture of repentance. So we need to repent. We need to turn from rebellion to God, turn from a life without God, and turn to one with God. And so to do that, we simply hear what he says and we act on it. We obey him. And, and that obedience saved them and that obedience to apply the blood to our lives uh, will save us because Jesus is our Passover. We've got to apply the blood. So we hear, we believe, and we repent, we turn. And uh, I know many of us have done that already, so I'm thankful for that. And I'm here to encourage you today. You, you've done what, what you needed to do now. You're, you're, that blood's applied to your heart. And that blood marks you. And, and, and that blood has great benefit for you today. Judgment has passed over you. You'll not come into judgment because Jesus has taken our judgment. So I want to talk about that for a few minutes. Uh, we're, we're under the blood, as we like to say. The, the blood has been applied to our lives. We can plead the blood. What does the blood do for us? Well, first of all, the blood takes away sin. I want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53 is an amazing chapter. It's the, it's, it's the chapter of the suffering uh, Savior. And there's so much here. But I want to, I want to read just a few verses here. Uh, verse 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now I want you to take I want you to take notice of that statement that the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And then in verse 7, I'll just read this. It says, He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Now, now this, is, this takes great significance for us today as we consider the cross of Christ and we think about this Savior who was crucified. We need to understand that, 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 that leading up to this, God gave us these amazing uh, illustrations and pictures and shadows, uh, metaphors throughout the Old Testament of just exactly what that, what, what that cross 
was all about. In the Garden of Eden, uh, when Adam and Eve fell, when they sinned, the Bible tells us they were naked, they were ashamed, and God provided for them animal skins to cover themselves. They had tried to do it with leaves. That, that was their own self-effort. That, that's the efforts of man to save themselves that doesn't work. But God provided for them these animal skins. Now you can imagine Adam and Eve had lived with these animals. Adam had named them all. They were very close to them. And now here they are. They're having to put on these, these, these skins of animals that had to be slain, that had to die for them. So blood was shed from the very beginning to indicate, number one, God loves us so much he wants to cover us. He wants to, he wants to help us with our, with our sin problem. And so what, what we see there is that the sacrifice. We see Christ already pictured as the innocent dying for the guilty. And then in the Old Testament, in the law of Moses, we see that there was provision made for you know, all of the, uh, the people uh, that, that their sins could be covered. And it was covered because, um, uh, you know, uh, blood was shed. Now, we, I want you to understand that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners uh, without Christ. Outside of Christ, we're sinners and we fall short of the glory of God. And we know this, the wages of sin is death. Sin has a death sentence placed on it. The soul that sins must die. So, so the sinner must die. God is a holy God. Sin cannot exist in his presence. And so that, that death sentence has come upon all of humanity because of sin. But he gave this, this provision that a life for a life, if, if there was a substitute then the sin could be covered in the Old Testament. And so we see these sacrifices. And what would happen is when, that, when, when, the, when, the, when the child of, uh, of Israel would come before that priest, they would bring that animal that they were going to sacrifice. And what they would do is they would lay their hand over on the head of that animal. And when they would do that, they would transfer the guilt for their sin over onto that animal. And then the animal would be slain and then its blood would be offered to God. Because the, the life of the, uh, of the, uh, the life is in the blood, the Bible tells us. And, and so, so that life then, the blood, the soul, the nefesh is in the blood, uh, the, the Bible tells us. And so as, that, as the blood is poured out, as it's shed, the soul is given. And so a soul for a soul, a life for a life. And so... Uh, in the Old Testament, we see that picture of Christ being our Savior. And so here we see that, that at Calvary, what God did is He laid our iniquity. Take note. Uh, we've turned everyone to His own way, and the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. So over onto Jesus, all of our guilt for sin, all of that guilt came upon Jesus. Jesus took it because he was that perfect lamb of God. He had been picked out and chosen. And he was wholly harmless and undefiled. He was sinless. And, and, and Jesus was that perfect lamb of God, chosen by God, picked out by God. And, and so, so Jesus then uh, becomes for us our substitute. And he did all of that for us. I just read this from Isaiah 53. And our iniquity was laid on him and he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And so on that cross what we see is him dying for us that he would take away our sin, not cover it. In the Old Testament, bl the blood of bulls and goats can't take away sin. It can cover it for a year. Uh, that high priest that would go in and offer that blood on the mercy seat and that would cover him uh, uh, for another year. But, but for us, we understand that Jesus Christ has, has taken uh, uh, all of our iniquity, our iniquity, all of our sin and all the guilt that goes with it, and he has, has died, he's poured out his blood, his soul for us, and he's presented that now in heaven on that mercy seat in heaven. And the Father, of course, has accepted that. And, and as John the Baptist said, when he saw his cousin, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin 
of the world. Hallelujah. That, that always excites me. Every time I think about that, He takes away the sin of the world. He's taken my sin away. In Colossians chapter 2, it talks about how there was a handwriting of, 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 of requirements that was against us. So in other words, we could have took all of our sins, if you will, and, and if we could have wrote them down and made something of a bill, if you will. Here's all these sins that have to be paid for. What, what, what Paul says, that, that bill was nailed to his cross. So all your sins, my sins, they've been nailed to Christ's cross. And so when, when, when Jesus died on that cross, your sins were nailed up there. And so when he died, he died for your sins, for my sins. And he took, he took them away. The price was paid. That blood was enough. That's what the Father required. And so when Jesus died on that cross, and he said, it is finished, it's finished. Our sins have been washed away. They've been removed. They're no longer against us. Well, that's why we can come now. Before the Father, and we have acceptance with the Father. We have freedom boldly. We're able to go into the throne of God. And, and how wonderful that is to know that Jesus did that for us. You know, not only does it take sin away, blood uh, is, is a price that was paid for us. Paul says that, that, that uh, uh, you've been bought with a price. Paul also says that uh, the church was purchased with his own blood. So you and I have been purchased. And, and I, want you to, I want you to see it this way. You know, we can make a lot about, you know, by being bought out of slavery and the ransom and, and the redemption. Uh, you know, that, that's certainly a wonderful picture. But for me, what it tells me is that I'm valued. I'm worth something to God. That he was willing to pay the, 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 uh, the highest price he could pay. What, what more could God pay uh, for us? And, and, and he put a value on us. You know, you could look at a picture, a painting, if you will, and, and you might look at that painting and you might think that painting is, is you know, your five-year-old child could have painted something that looked better than that. Uh, but, but very often we see those things hanging in museums or in people's homes, and what, we've, what we discover is that they've paid millions of dollars for that painting. And so we, we need to understand that the, the value is assigned by the person who's willing to pay for it, to put a price on it, to value it in some way. You and I were so valuable to God the Father that he was willing to pay the price of his only begotten son for us. And that tells us we are valued. That tells us that we are worth something in his eyes. Isn't that wonderful? He's paid a great price for us because he values us. He wants us to be his. He wants us to be his children. He wants us to be close to him and, and to be loved by him and to love him in return. And, and how wonderful a thought that is. Behold what manner of love is this that we should be called the children of God. That's a wonderful thing. And the blood also delivers us. You know, the, the Hebrew children needed deliverance. They, they, listen, they were in a mess. They, they were under the power and the authority of Pharaoh. And all that, that, that he commanded. Uh, uh, he, he had them in bondage. And the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1 that, that because of that blood, we've been rescued. We've been, we've been redeemed from the power of darkness and translated, brought into the kingdom of his son. Amen. See, that blood broke the hold of Satan on our lives. It broke his authority over us. It broke his power. Because once that sin was dealt with, he had nothing now uh, uh, to, 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 to hold against us. And so that fear that we have in our entire uh, lifetime, uh, the Bible says, uh, that was broken. That bondage was broken. That fear of death has been broken by Jesus who took on the flesh and blood and died in our place and released us from Satan. Romans 12 and 11 says that, that they, that's the believers, overcame him who was Satan. They overcame him by the blood of of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The, the blood has power. The blood has power to break the power of Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that today. 
And then the next thing that we read in the Passover story that I want to focus on here today is that they, they were told to eat the lamb. They were to take that lamb that they had slain and then they were to roast it and, and then to eat it. And they needed to eat because they needed strength. They needed strength for the journey that they were about to uh, enter into. And, and that journey was going to require from them uh, strength. They, go, they were going to need it uh, over those next few days. And so they were to eat that lamb, they were to eat that bread, uh, uh, the unleavened bread, and, and that then uh, would make them ready because they were told to be ready. You and I need strength for the journey. You and I, listen, we've been given a promise of a, of, a, of a Canaan, of a promised land. We, we have been given great promises. And, and if we're going to live, that, live in that life of promise, if we're going to live in Canaan spiritually in, in, in this day and time, we're going to need strength to do that because we're going to be challenged. We're going to be listen. It, it sometimes it gets uh, uh, you know it gets weary uh, out here trying to, to live this life, and and we're going to be challenged by different things. We're going to be tested. We're going to be tempted, and we're going to need strength. And so we we need to, we need to find that strength in the Lord, and we're going to face enemies. There's going to be enemies that are going to come against us, and and we have a, an enemy, of course, that we know. Uh, is Satan, and he's going to do everything he can to get keep us defeated, and to keep us depressed, and to keep us weak. He he wants to rob you of joy. He wants to take your testimony away from you. He wants to mess your life up every way that he can. And so, on your journey, on your way to your promise, the devil's going to fight you with everything he's got. But 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 we need to understand that that the key to overcoming him is to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So how can we find the strength? How? Just like the children of, of, of Israel were told to eat the lamb, I say to you, we need to eat the lamb. We need to get full of the lamb. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the living bread that's come down from heaven. And if you eat this bread, you'll live forever. And he said, my flesh is bread. So eat my flesh. And what he's saying is you need to, you need to take me in. You need to make me part of your life. You need to let me be that one that is the Lord of your life. You need to let me guide you, control you, uh, direct your path. You need the strength that I give, the life that I give. You need the promises that I've made. You need to let me be your Lord. Let me be your healer. Let me be your deliverer. Let me be your sustainer. Let me be the one that gives you joy. Let me be the one that gives you peace. Hallelujah. Boy, this is exciting to me. And, and, and we need Jesus. And we need all of the Jesus we can get. We need to fill up on Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to, we need to take our plate and fill it up with lots of lamb and lots of that bread of life. And we need to eat. And we need to eat a lot. So, so how can we do that? We need to understand that, that a large part of this is the word of Christ, the word of God. We need that. Uh, Jesus said this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Hallelujah. His word is food. Hallelujah. It's spiritual food. And it'll give you strength. When you take in Christ and take in the word of the Lord, he's the living word and the Bible's the written word and they, there's a oneness as we, as we take Jesus and put him right in the middle of that word, whether it's Genesis or right on up through the maps in your Bible. Uh, when you put Jesus in there and you receive that word as coming from, from him, I'm telling you, it's going to make a difference and it's going to feed you and it's going to nourish you and it's going to give you that spiritual life and strength that you need. Jesus says... Also, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will of the Father and it will be done for you. So he said, let, your, let my words abide in you. You need to get full of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said, the words I speak, they're spirit and life. And so we need to get all the word that we can get because you are what you eat. Hallelujah. You are what you eat. And so you need, to, you need lots and lots of Jesus in your life. And it'll make such a difference if you'll make Jesus everything to you. If you'll put him right in the middle, right in the center of your life. And the last thing is, uh, we understand that they were to take, uh, as they ate that lamb, as they had their meal there that night, they were to 
eat it dressed. Their belt was to be on. Their sandals were to be on their feet. They were to even to eat it with the staff, their staff, their walking staff in their hand. And so what he was saying to them, you need to be ready. You need to be ready to go because when the call comes, you need to be ready to jump up and take off. There's not going to be any opportunity for you to to then get ready. You certainly aren't going to have time to, oh, this is for real. Let me go get a lamb. It's not going to be, you're not going to have time to pack up because you're going to miss the train. If you do, you're going to miss this procession, this parade of the, of the people of God uh, leaving out of their bondage, leaving out of that slavery and going into their promise. There's not going to be time for that. You're going to miss it if you do that. And so I, I think there's so much that we can, we can learn from that. And I don't want to take a lot of time here because we don't have a lot of time left. But, but we need to understand we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Jesus made it very clear that when he comes again, he's coming suddenly, like a thief in the night, he's going to come. And so he made it very clear, you're not going to know the hour, you're not going to know the time, so watch therefore and be ready, for I'm coming at a time uh, that you're not going to expect. And so it's essential that we understand we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready. Jesus can come again at any moment. Are you ready? Are you ready? Have you made your preparations? Have you you got your life right with God? Have you you, uh, repented? Have you put that blood of the Lamb on the doorpost of your heart? Have you done that? Have you made your preparations for that day when Jesus comes again? We need to be ready. That midnight cry that we read about in Matthew where where, where there's ten virgins. Five are wise and five are foolish. The wise ones were ready. They were prepared. The foolish virgins weren't ready and they missed their opportunity. You know, uh, we have a beautiful picture also of salvation in the ark. And the Bible says that when, the, when that day came for the, for the rain to start, for that flood to begin, the Bible says that the Lord called Noah and his family into the ark. And then it says, and the Lord shut the door. And so there is a time. Listen, you, you may think you have plenty of time. Maybe there's going to be more time. Maybe there's not going to be more time. But when the Lord gets ready to wrap this thing up, you need to be ready. And listen, uh, when Jesus comes in that rapture and, that, and, and, and his church uh, uh, goes like that, I mean, that's one thing. But listen, we, we don't know how long we're going to live on this earth. You, you, this, you know, uh, uh, some of you may outlive me. I don't know. But there's a 100% mortality. All of us are going to have to, unless Jesus comes before we die, we're going to have to go by way of that grave. And that's, listen, for everybody that, for, you know, other than Jesus coming in, that's going to be our moment of, uh, 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 you know, the, the moment of truth. Are we ready? So you don't know what can happen today. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and your life uh, is like a vapor, the Bible tells us. And the Bible makes it clear, we will face our creator. We will face our maker. Will you be ready? If you were to die today, would you be ready? Are your sins under the blood? Are they washed away? Have you turned your life over? Have you repented? Have you given your life to Him? Have you, have you heard and obeyed? Is, is, is your life under the blood? This is so important. So I want to just make that, I want to make that very clear now. Have you, have you applied the blood to your life? Are you born again? Are you born again? Have you, have you give your heart and your life to Him? So important today. And I want to ask this to, to everyone here uh, that's, that's watching us. I want, to, I want to ask you an important question. Are you living as though He can come at any moment? Are you living that kind of a life? Now, it's a liberating life to live that way. It's not, a, it's, not, it's not slavery or drudgery or, 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 or God just trying to, to be, you know, kind of hard on us or anything like that. But are you living as though he could come again at any moment? Are you doing what God's called you to do? Are you, are you doing the things that he's, he's spoke, he has spoken in your heart for you to do? 
Uh, have, have you made things right with those that maybe you've got issues with? Uh, do you have a besetting sin that you need to deal with, Christian? Do you need, to, do you need help with that? Do you, you know, uh, um, God's right there available. We can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. Whatever your situation is, your circumstance, listen, he's, there to, he's ready to help you through that. He's ready to deliver you and set you free. But the blood's going to be the, the key that unlocks all that provision. And so put your faith right now in that blood of Jesus and, and, and let that blood uh, open up that door of all the provision that God has for us. He's bu Jesus bought what you need right now. Jesus bought it with His own blood. Maybe you're sick in your body. You need healing. The Bible says by His stripes we are healed. That blood purchased not only your forgiveness, but your healing. Receive that right now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to receive this, we're going to receive this communion here in just a moment. And if you're not saved, if, you're, if you haven't put your faith in Jesus as your Savior, if you're not living for Jesus today, this is a great time for you to do that. Your whole life may have led up to this moment. You watching this on the internet maybe. Your whole life has led up to this moment. God's dealing with you. God's speaking to you. He's convicting you. You know you need to do this. You need to make this right with Him. And so, so this is a great time for you to receive from Him. If you can get the elements, great. If not, that's alright. Just spiritually receive. But we, we want to look to that now. And as we receive this communion, I want you to consider giving your heart and your life to Him as we do so. Because I've always said this is a great time to be saved. This is a great time to be saved when we receive the elements of, of communion because of what it represents, what it speaks to us. Now, reading from the Word of God, this is what Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's thank the Lord for this bread. Father, thank you for providing for us this bread. Thank you for that, God. You make a way for us and you provide for us so wonderfully and we're thankful for that, Lord. Now, Father, we also want to thank you for what this bread represents. It represents that broken body of Jesus. That body broken so that we could be made whole. Lord, there are those listening right now that want to be made whole. They're tired of living life, Father. They're tired of living life that, that has no joy in it. They, they're, they're, they're tired of, lack, of, of no peace. They're, they're tired of, of all the things they've tried that don't work, Father. And, and they want to be made whole. They want to know that, that, that they're right. And, that, and we know, Father, that it only comes as we are right with you. So as we partake of this bread, as we receive this bread, we receive Jesus into our lives. We receive Him into our hearts. We receive Him into us. And like re receiving food, that food becomes part of us and we become what we eat. Lord, we receive Jesus right now. And we want to become like Jesus and we're one with Jesus and, and, and just have Jesus wrapped all up in our life. And as we receive this, we remember that Jesus bought our forgiveness and our healing at that cross. And so we receive healing into our bodies right now as we receive this bread. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, in the same manner, Paul goes on to say, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus has cut covenant with us. Jesus has, has made a eternal covenant with those that will put their faith in that blood. If they'll take, if they'll take that glimpse of Jesus on that cross and understand that that was for you. He loved you so much He was willing to leave heaven and come down and, and take your place 
and die for you. If you'll believe that, if you'll just believe that and receive that as truth, just like drinking this into your body, if you'll receive that precious sacrifice as for you and make it yours, He promises your sins will be forgiven. He promises you'll be rightly related to the Father. Not only will you be forgiven of sin, but you'll be given His righteousness. The righteousness of God is ours through Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us. He became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He, he says if you'll, just, if you'll believe this and make this part of your life, he says, I'm going to wrap you in righteousness, my righteousness. And when you come before the Father, He's going to see you in my righteousness. You, you can give up and quit trying to be good enough. Just let my righteousness be your righteousness. So let's thank the Lord for this fruit of the vine. Father, thank you for this fruit of the vine. Father, we know for a grape to produce this juice, it had to be crushed. And Father, we know for salvation to come to us. We know, Father, for that forgiveness, Lord, to come to us. That pardon from sin. That wonderful place that you've given to us in heaven. Right there with you, by your side. To, to, to have that, your son had to die for us and take our place. So that everything that would stand between us and you. Everything that would keep us from knowing that you loved us. Everything that kept that love from becoming a reality in our lives. Lord Jesus took our place and died for that and removed it through that cross. And so as we, as we receive this juice, Father, we receive the blood of Jesus. We receive all of its benefits, all of its power, everything it speaks, Lord. We, let, we say, let that blood speak for us, God. Oh, let that blood speak. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. And we know that it speaks mercy for us. And so we thank you for what it represents. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. I hope that as you have heard the word today, as you've received communion or as you have participated maybe even just spiritually in this, that this has somehow helped you, somehow encouraged you. I, I want you to be encouraged today. Jesus loves us so much, and he's with us. Some of us, it's just like this Passover, uh, we're, 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 at, we're at home. We're, on a, we're, at a, a, you know, um, we're at a time where we can't come together as the body of Christ. But, but right there where you're at, I want you to be encouraged that you are you are His and you are the body of Christ right there just as much as if you were able to connect with your brothers and sisters physically. I want you to be encouraged that you are saved, that you're right with God, that you belong to Him, that you've got a place in heaven and that He's coming after you. I just want you to be encouraged in that. I want you to be encouraged that He is with you and whatever your circumstance or situation, He's right there to help you through it, to deliver you, to set you free. He is a deliverer. Jesus is a deliverer. So let Jesus have His way in your life. If you have gave your heart to the Lord today for the first time, let us know. Just message me, you know, uh, 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 whatever, however you can get up with me, let me know. If you can't get up with me, let another believer know. Somebody you know that is a believer, tell them you gave your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. And they'll help you on this journey. And I want to help you on this journey as you go forward, okay? Father, we thank you, Father, for this time that we've had here today in your presence. And in your presence, Father, we've received. We've been blessed. We've been helped. Thank you for that. Father, as we go now from this time, we ask, Father, that you, that you change us, make us different, make us, make us uh, like Jesus, transform us into that image of your Son. And, uh, Father, just let our lives be living examples. Let us be uh, a, a testimony to those around us that the blood has power. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
prosper and be in health, even as your souls prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.